Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the difference between a cheap work boot and an expensive work boot and why I feel it's worth spending the money on more expensive uh, footwear. So let's get something out of the way right away. Depending on what job you're performing, whatever trade you're in or task or even the contractor that you work for, you have to abide by their safety regulations. So that may mean that you need a steel toe, you need a composite toe, maybe you need nothing conductive in your boot, so no steel shank or anything like that. Maybe you need a metatarsal covering because you're welding or there's sparks. Whatever it is that you need, it's important to make sure that you abide by those regulations. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to work, you're not gonna be able to make money. So that's the first thing I just wanna get out of the way right off the bat. What I wanna show you is this pair of boots I have right here. And this is a company called uh, Brahma. These were the pair of boots that I bought one day on the way to the job because I had forgotten my work boots. And I think this was when I was working up in New York. It was about a three hour drive. I had forgotten my work boots. I went to Walmart just to get something to get me through the day. And I saw these, I said, all right, well, they look like a work boot. They have a steel toe in them. Uh, everything safety wise is there, slip resistant sole. That week, wearing these work boots was one of the most uncomfortable weeks I've ever had. You could feel everything on the floor, everything that you would step on, you could feel through the bottom of this shoe. So when you would step on a ladder rung, this thing would just conform around it. You could see how easily I could press the center of this thing in. Now, as I mentioned, from the outside, it can be difficult to tell whether it's a good work boot or if it's a poor work boot. You could feel that they're almost kind of the same weight. They both seem to be about the same size. This one seems to be pretty beefy and all that stuff, but until you wear it, then you realize, boy, this is an inferior boot in almost every single way. So let's get down to the brass tacks of why the cheaper boots are not as good as the more expensive boots. I guess a better way to put that would be, what am I getting for the extra money when I buy a pair of really good boots? A lot of times to see that, you have to cut the shoe open. I have yet to find a store that's okay with you cutting open their boots and looking on the inside, but I've saved you the trouble when it comes to these Brahmas right here. I cut them in half, took these out to my workshop, and cut them in half so that you can see the inside of this boot. So looking at this, you can see the heel is full of these open cavities right here, which does allow a little bit of compression, a little bit of cushion there. There's really not much to speak of on top of that. The metal shank is right there, the steel shank. Now that does add a little bit of rigidity to a boot, but as we've seen, even cheap boots can have a steel shank in them, so that's not really an indicator of quality per se. But down here, where you're looking at, between the outsole and the insole is where the money is spent or saved on a pair of boots. Because this is something that you can't see unless you can see a cross section of a pair of shoes. Other than this, cutting it open, you don't know what's under there. And by the time you figure it out, when your shoes feel like you're walking directly on the floor, like I mentioned with my Thursday boots review, after a year of wearing them, it felt like I was walking right on the hardwood floor, which is not a good feeling. That's when the inside cushion has worn away. Now what they use on the inside will depend on how well those boots break in. These uh, are the mock toe wedge sole red wings that I've had a couple of different pairs of these just as they wear out. They're my favorite work boots. I love these boots. And after you break them in, they feel like slippers. You'll notice that they do not compress, not even close. I'm trying my hardest. You cannot get that to compress the way these compress, the way that just kind of caves in on itself. The reason is, is that they use a leather insole Underneath that very thick leather insole, you have a layer of cork. Now what happens is over time, that will conform to your foot and become actually more comfortable. Plus those are resilient materials that they allow a, a certain amount of cushion no matter what. You can't compress leather completely flat the way you can foam, EVA stuff, anything that's like a foam kind of open cell thing. Eventually you can compress it and it's almost just like walking on the floor as I mentioned. So when you look at this from the outside, you really can't tell that all that's in there. However, there are a few cross sections available that I found online, which I'll put up here, that you can actually see how this is made and the difference between this boot and this Brahma right here. Of course, they're not gonna wanna show you a cross section of these boots right here because what it is between the insole where your foot lands and the outsole, which is basically just rubber, very, very flimsy rubber, is this kind of, for lack of a better word, uh, cardboard, it's garbage. After a while that compresses and, and all you're basically doing is standing on this very crappy 
rubber outsole. Now, to be fair, they're cheap boots. They're not meant to be a $350 pair of Red Wings. There's, there's a difference there. But a lot of people will argue with me, on the job site especially, nah, I don't spend that much on boots. I, and I've seen it in the comments too. Nah, it's $60, that's a lot of money for a pair of boots. What are you talking about? Why would I ever spend that kind of money on this pair of boots when I could buy these right here? Moreover, I could buy 10 pairs of these for the price of one NYX boot. So where's the benefit there? Something I've always lived by, whether it was in construction or as my time as a mechanic, is if I'm gonna work with tools, I want the best tools. I want the best pair of lineman pliers because I'm using those all day long. And even though one may be more expensive than the next, every time I use it, if it works that much better, when you add that up at the end of the work week, that's a lot better. That is worth its money. Your feet and your shoes are possibly the most important tool that you can have. Because you have to stand on your feet, you have to climb ladders, you have to jump into man lifts, you have to drive, whatever it is that you do, the the only thing between you and the ground, that nasty construction site or job site, wherever it is, ground, is your boot. These are the Red Wing Iron Rangers, and while they look like a work boot, they are not a work boot. You could possibly wear these maybe in a warehouse setting, something like that. No steel toe, no composite toe there. Uh, the original Iron Rangers like these don't actually even have any traction on the bottom. These are a nice looking boot that's sort of work boot inspired. I don't count those as work boots at all. If you buy them once, the beauty about these boots is that the uppers and everything are made so well that you can have the bottom completely resold several times over. And we're talking, this is gonna take years, depending on what you're doing. And you can have them essentially recrafted and have a, basically a brand new boot. The uppers of these are made so well that you can do that. Same thing can be said with the Red Wings, although I do see the, the places that Red Wing had to cut corners in order to keep that price where it was as compared to something like this. Again, we're talking twice the price, so it's to be expected, but you can have Red Wings recrafted. These right here, you could have them slap a whole new sole on there, refinish the uppers. I know Red Wing offers their own rebuilding service. There's no way that you could even recraft these if you wanted to. If you wanted to try to take that bottom off of there and recraft it, there's no welt, there's no stitching to take apart, it's just a piece of rubber. And here's a little side benefit of buying something that's made out of actual leather rather than fake leather. Your feet stink in these. You take these things off and you can't even get away from yourself. The reason is that this doesn't breathe. Whatever this PVC based stuff is, does not breathe. You might as well be wearing trash bags on your feet. So you take your feet out of these and they stink, they're gross, you wanna throw them away, which you should. You take your feet out of either of these, you feel decent at the end of the day. Now, as I mentioned, if you were to cut these red wings open, you would see a nice thick leather insole. Underneath that would be a thick layer of cork and of course your outsole. But when you get to something like this, like Whites, like Westco, like NYX, any of those really decent made to measure expensive boots, where's your money going? There is more leather used between your foot and the outsole of this boot than there is on the entirety of this boot, I would argue. They have four layers of oak tanned leather underneath there. They have leather in the heel. I mean, look at the stacked leather heel. They have leather there. I mean. Every place that they could on this, they put leather to bolster your foot to make sure that it's supported correctly and that you feel good at the end of the day. The most important difference between cheap work boots and expensive work boots is your ability to keep working. We all know those guys who've been in the trade for a long time and they get out of their truck, they get out of their car and they're hobbling over because their back is shot. Don't you think that if they could rewind the clock and if they knew that having the proper support, the proper footwear would help them with their issues, don't you think they would easily, happily spend the money? I guarantee you that an investment in a decent pair of work boots is still cheaper than trying to reverse time and paying all those medical bills. Your ability to keep working and keep earning a decent income with your hands in your selected trade or whatever profession it is, is incredibly important. If you are no good, then you can't earn money, and that's the one drawback of working with your hands. You have to be able to work with them to earn a living. So in order to stretch that out, in order to not be retired and feel like a complete wreck, it's worth investing now. But of course, I wanna hear from you. So let me know in the comments below what your favorite pair of work boots are. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.